place. You can see it as we pan from downtown Los Angeles along the shores of the Pacific to Malibu Beach, and there it is, the glorious campus of Pepperdine University, the Olympic-sized swimming pool, symbolizing the first event in the competition as the team captains get their people ready. The atmosphere at the moment, relaxed, almost festive, the crowd forming. But yet, there will be a surge of competitive fire when the competition gets underway. And again, the very first event in that pool, the swimming competition. behind us, the crowds in front of us, the crowds everywhere, they're enthusiastic, excited, and frequently cheering. And yes, indeed, we are back at Pepperdine University, a beautiful campus overlooking Malibu, ready for the battle of the network stars the fifth time around. I'm Howard Cosell, and by this time you know something about the format of the Battle of the Network Stars. Having been here four times before and earning my undergraduate degree, I'm now seeking my master's, and the competition goes like this. The great stars from the respective three networks, and there are eight on each team, vie competitively in several events. Seven in all, quickly the running order. First swimming, second kayak racing, Third, the baseball dunk, and you'll have a huge amount of fun with that one. Fourth, the obstacle course. Fifth, the running relay. Sixth, touch football. Seventh, the climactic event, the tug of war. Each member of the winning team gets $20,000. A lot of loot involved. And you can hear some of the noise behind us as Bobby Conrad manifests the fact that when he's involved, he makes this competition a war. Each member of the second place team gets 15,000, the third place team 10,000. Working with me this time around, a freshman at Pepperdine, but the venerable statesman from the University of Southern California, my colleague on Monday Night Football, the Giffer. I thought this was supposed to be fun. Captain Conrad's going nuts over there. He's firing up his team. It's incredible. You know, I've hosted some of the men's superstars on ABC, and you almost have the same feeling here, Howard, and that is that while well, there's a lot of fun and there's a whole you know, a lot of happiness involved in it, they really are serious. These are really competitors. Now, the captains, along with Conrad, McLean, Stevenson, and Gabe Kaplan, they've had their teams out secretly That's working true. out. So while we're in for a lot of fun and a lot of kicks, they all want to win. Right you are, Giff, and as you can see from the past four battles, the ABC stars have won twice, CBS and NBC each have won once. Now we're ready for the swimming competition. That's the scene set, that Olympic-sized swimming pool. Quickly, the rules, five to each team. Two on each team must be females. Each participant swims one lap. That's one width of the pool, 25 yards. But the anchor person swims two widths or 50 yards. Winning team gets 100 points. Second place team, 75. Third place team, 50. The main introductions, the team of stars of NBC shows right there, Kasky Swain. And in the number two spot, Pam Hensley. Gives a little bit of luster. Then Bill Devane. Brian Leary, who has the look of a competitor. And the anchor man is Joe Bottoms. And that's a look well not described. Then the team of stars on EBC show. Leading off, Richard Hatch. Dick, a veteran of this competition. He had on it previously when he was in streets of San Francisco. The number two spot for this team, Aaron Jensen. He can swim like she looks for him. She'll be a beauty. Debbie Boone is in the number three spot. And then Robin Williams swimming in the four spot. The anchor man for this team is Big Bob Europe. Now the team of stars from CBS shows. Leading off, that was Timmy Reed. Little Charlene Tilton, number two. Barb Burton. Number three. Always for most, he'll be in Pitkin. Valerie Bertinelli is number four. And the number five man is David Letton. Well, that's the team of stars from CBS shows. They're ready for the first event, the swimming competition, in the seven-event overall battle of the network stars. They're on the starting blocks. Take over, Giff. 
And coach, the humor's gone now. Caskey Swain, the lane nearest to you for NBC, leads off for his team. ABC has Richard Hatch there in the middle lane. CBS in the far lane. Tim Reed for CBS and this Caskey Swain. He opens up a half length lead over Richard Hatch. And he's about ready to touch off. And in goes Pam Hensley, and she begins to widen the margin over the ABC contestant. That's Mary Jensen. Panoramically on your screen, you could see that CBS is already dead. But Pam Hensley is pouring it on. She touches off. Bill Devane in. And again, you get a glimpse of a half-length lead. Look at Devane open it up, Frank, as he moves down to touch off for Brianne Leary. And here's Devane with the touch. This is Brianne. She'll go the final 25 yards for her team. She'll turn it over to Joe Bottoms. He will travel 50 yards, and we've seen him sink traveling 50 yards, Howard. But a commanding lead by NBC. Brianne Larry stroking like one of those East German girls at Montreal. She touches off, and in goes Joe Bottoms. And you can see quickly there the size of the lead the NBC group has. And with Joe Bottoms and that powerful overhand stroke, it's become no and look at that competitive turn by Joe Bottoms. It is a no contest, and Joe Bottoms is not weakening at all. 50 yards a long way if you haven't done that. A lot of practice. They've got better than a length lead. Forget about CBS. They're hopeless. Bottoms touches in. The easy winner in what may be record time for this competition. We'll check that later. In the meantime, look at that. CBS hasn't even finished yet. But quickly, let's have a talk with Joe Bottoms. We take it by. I think it took it by almost a full length. That that wide a march, and you've been good swimmers. We got a good swimmers and a good team. You've been swimming long. Uh, yeah. You know, Bob Conrad gets us out. He had us out every evening swimming. <laughs> well, congratulations again. Thanks. Well, maybe that's what Gabe Kaplan should have done. Here's Frank with Gabe. Well, Gabe, you uh, got second place, but uh, maybe the maybe the, the viscosity of the water on the planet Orc is a little different than here. Ah, un sasu velocity is like a una unina mana. De la muga ni la muga la ma yor mama muga la sevi. He said something about my mother. I didn't like exactly what he said. <laughs> second place isn't bad. Twenty-five yards long way, Mary. It's longer than I thought it would be. The top events coming up, Gabe. Yeah, oh yeah, our top events are coming right up. We we're strong, and the events coming up. What is the top event on Orc? Yes, he said, fooling around. Easy. So the competition continues, and I see Frank over there with Marin Jensen. Marin, you're just as calm and cool and collected. Uh, you're not nervous at all? No, not one bit. Have you tried this before? Sure. It's, it's real easy. If you just keep it smooth, don't get nervous. It's the worst thing you can do, and just relax on through. That applies to about anything, doesn't it? Huh? Good luck now. Well, thank you. I'm going to need it. <laughs> Pretty girl. She's not going to need a lot of luck in her career. It began in much the same way as Patty Klaus's. She's been a model in the past, but right now, one of the stars of Battlestar Galactica, playing the role of Athena. It's the name of a Greek goddess, and she almost looks like one, together with Lawn Green and Richard Hatch. And she likes to tell about how the whole thing feels when she's on the set. I think the most intriguing thing is seeing the show once it's all put together because we, the actors don't do the whole thing. We are only a part of the whole. And seeing the effects, and I get real excited when I'm out there flying a plane and I see it jetting through space. And yet when I'm doing it, you know, it's just right there on the old stage. So that, that's exciting. It is. I mentioned that she plays the role of Athena, and it's a perfectly appropriate name for the young woman who looks like a Greek goddess. And there she is with the headband, ready to start in the race, Giff. And the Greek goddess is in trouble, Howard. She's in against Brian Larry. There's Brian Larry in the far lane. Now, we know she's a good athlete. Ready to go. They're off. Under the first obstacle, Giff. Brian with the lead already. Now through the tires. Look at her. She does it just absolutely flawlessly. She looks like an old football player. <laughs> Watch the monkey ball. Oh, look at Brian there, Howard. But look at that. Marin Jensen in trouble. And a big lead for Brian. She went over that wall. Had no trouble with the water pit. Marin does. And Brian Murray, there she is, breezing into the victory. She is some athlete. Oh, she's a quiet athlete. 
Remains to be seen, though, what her time is, whether or not she was able to better that of Wendy Rastanner and that of Valerie Bertinelli. Let's look at this again in slow-mo, Gift. This is where Brian took command. Right there. Yep, that's where Marin died. Nope, we just got the times. Brian Leary's time, 26.40. Marin Jensen's 32.85. Rastanner and Bertinelli are the leaders.